All right, guys, so I don't know about you, but if you have an older mid-2000 style BMW, a lot of you would have this CCC iDrive system. This one is in my 2006 E60 M5, and the screen is actually like delaminated, if you will. It is faded, and you can barely see it. Like everything still works. I can still hit the menu and go in like communication and entertainment and all that other good stuff. However, I can't stream Bluetooth. The Bluetooth actually doesn't even work in here because they had some other USB Apple Play thing set up that I know was plugged in somewhere. I forget the name of what it was. But anyways, it worked with Apple, didn't work with Android. So I've got a new screen. So we're going to install that today. Alright, so here is my Beast 2006 E60 M5 Interlagos Blue on black SMG and got, um, where is it? And over here, I actually have an Alpine White E60 manual car, get into that later. Here's a pile of parts. But the important part for today is in this box. So let's get this box somewhere where we can dig into it. So I can't remember if I got this from ECS Tuning or from Turner Motorsport. Either way, um, they are available through either company. And this is hopefully going to be a straightforward procedure. So I actually ordered... A different version originally from a company out of Australia and I forget what their name is and they had my money for like a month month and a half and they kept saying oh they're gonna come in next week they're gonna come in next week waiting from our supplier and you know it was a hundred dollars cheaper so I don't know if it's the same quality but I was like you know what if it's a hundred dollars cheaper and this was a uh, pretty cheap car to buy. So I'm trying to keep my overall investment low on it. And um, yeah, I was just tired of waiting. So anyways, let's open up this box, hopefully. There you go. So this came to $541 with Texas sales tax. Gotta love tax. And uh, this is what we have inside bunch of wires that are hopefully plug and play all right and um, looks like we have instructions it was from ECS oh look at this they even have whatsapp ECS you just gain more respect from me I love whatsapp support um, got some more inputs and whatnot and then Probably most importantly, the screen. And this actually, this has some weight behind it. Looks pretty nice. So let me go through the instructions real quick and then I will paraphrase and hopefully we can get this installed quickly and easily. Okay guys, I have like briefly gone through these instructions and they're not very clear. So you need to determine the type of system you have. And I think these are probably generic to if you have CCC or CIC, Evo, NBT, all this stuff. So of course we're here. So we have an independent CD, DVD slot, iDrive with silver color, CCC, nine square UI. So that's us. Now here, it's telling you everything that comes with it, right? And then we have a CCC 10 pin 
and then it's telling you what the other systems have in terms of other pins. Again, so these are just generic because I guess they're too lazy to print off independent instructions or individual instructions as per the unit that you're dealing with. So let me, I'm going to start with trying to remove this old screen. And I have a feeling I'm going to need my little my little kit to get in there. So of course, I got everything laying on my lap. Put this up here. This one connector here. So I guess I could have always just got another screen since this one's not very good, but I want to be able to stream Bluetooth. I have a feeling this might end up going like behind the glove box. Or reverse in speaker. So this is going to go in here. We got that part figured out. This is going to go in line with something. We got to find out where that lives. So if you want your GPS, we're going to have to run this. Okay, so we'll get to that in a moment. I'm going to pass sort of some of this stuff over to the towards the passenger side because I have a feeling that's where we're going to be working. Then we have a microphone. Here's that other box that I was telling you guys about. Uh, it is the Grom MST4. And um, yeah, so this is gonna be removed. So I have a feeling it's actually gonna be easier What a mess. I know some people like absolutely hate wiring. Oh, there's a bunch of wiring to deal with here. So okay, I'm going to unplug that speaker, unplug that microphone. Audio output. So what we need to do here is um, find a way to get this stuff from down there up to there. I think the idea is somewhere down through there. So I go through the passenger side, see what I can't sneak up. Well, the only problem is, well, there's enough room. Barely, but there is. Heck, there you go. So, ends up happening now is this is going to plug in here All right. and then 
this is going to plug in here. Oh, I'm going to go back to the other side. Okay. Sounds like we've restored communications. Okay, so let's plug in the CCC. And then let's plug in this. see if we can get something look at that Let's try and, uh, oops. love to know where my phone is now. So I got this uh, auxiliary activator from Pemp. And if you guys get really creative with your box opening, you know, when you get stuff off Amazon, I'll leave that right there. So this is what we get. And from my understanding, like we're not gonna have to wire in the actual auxiliary input, right? Because auxiliary input that would normally go into the harness is technically in the new harness from our new screen. So all we need to do is plug in the inline adapter and follow the steps. And hopefully it will activate the auxiliary on the factory CCC, which this car didn't come with. So while I was banging my head against the wall, trying to figure stuff out, I got the old unit here and the new unit there. And, um, Needless to say, I couldn't get auxiliary configured on the original unit, which means, well, there's no auxiliary. This guy has no way to run through the existing car audio. So we are going to hook this stuff up and see how it goes. So all we need is this guy. At least I think. I'm like pretty confident. But all we need, I'm gonna leave any of the parts I take apart. A strategic location. So again, this is my factory screen. So the harness on the back comes out. and plugs in to this guy. And then this guy is gonna plug in like the factory one did. Can actually hear stuff connecting. And then we're going to take this guy. And we're going to plug this in here. Boom. All right. So we are all connected. I'm going to watch the uh, tutorial again. On my phone, wherever my phone is. They say start the car. I'm not going to start the car. We're just going to do accessories to where the screen comes on. One, 
two, three. Okay. The light is on. Let's go to my screen here. Get rid of all of this stuff. I have high battery drain. Oh, look at that. There's aux. Nice. There we go. Okay, so we're gonna turn that off now. So that is now done. So we don't need that anymore. The light's actually still on. Okay. Okay. That just needs to move over. Nice. This can actually go back. Well, I've got the screen in, fingerprints everywhere. And my apologies, the GoPro battery died. So I've got the microphone right here and excuse this, my headliner is absolutely trash. So the microphone that came with the kit, the wire was not very long. I happen to have an extra microphone from some CD player or radio that I had and I managed to run it along with the GPS signal guy right here down along the headliner, the a pillar snuck it around there you can actually see the wire sticking up there i still need to tuck it down and then i got it right across the dash here and then into the back of the head unit respectively so now i am just about to stick the factory cd player media unit and everything back in here i'll make sure that everything is working before i commit to the uh, climate controls and then the dash trim but everything hopefully fingers crossed we'll be good to go Sound okay? Mm, it's okay. It's like very faint. I have you on maximum volume. Oh, alright. Well, I'm testing out Bluetooth. That's it? That's it. And I love you. <laughs> okay, I love you too. So despite the sound of the car running in the background, um, I've had the system installed in the car now for probably like two weeks and been going back and forth with support. Support is active, I believe, out of China through WhatsApp, which I do like WhatsApp. And uh, just because it's convenient in terms of leaving messages and, and coming back to them. So what I found is he will respond or she or whatever, um, like two responses per night. I know that sounds odd, but that's pretty much the reality. And the main support that I've been looking for is the original CCC display, like the iDrive system that is specific to BMW. The screen constantly, I can't get it centered. It's offset, which means I can't see all the menu items and I can't do everything that I need to do. So he has sent me an update file. In fact, he sent me two update files. So I think I have to do one. And then once that one's done, then I have to do the other. So let me get this updated and then I'm gonna see 
if it fixes some of these issues and then I can give you guys sort of the overall conclusion and review to this system. Um, in a nutshell, you know, it's Android. Android is constantly updating stuff and it would be nicer if you didn't have to like externally download than bring it over. I guess if you actually hooked your, maybe, maybe if you had your Gmail hooked up and your app here and you could download it directly, maybe. But anyways, stay tuned for the final conclusion on the CCC upgrade of the Android system. Okay guys, so just to show you what happens when you get some updates, you can see we have some Chinese right in here in front of them. This one is titled 3.28. This one is 3.43. So I've already extracted and loaded. This is the one that you guys saw in the car. And every time you extract one of these, it has the same file name. So the system's probably smart enough to look for this on external memory or whatever it might be so it can start the update process automatically. So I have now extracted this one. It is copying over to my USB. You can see it right there. And once this is done, we'll stick it in the car and then it'll do the next update process. So yeah, a little clunky, right? Um, average user probably wouldn't wanna have to go through doing all this. And we don't even know if it's gonna fix our issues. So stay tuned. Okay guys, sorry for the glare, but you can see the screen is on there. And I'm just gonna plug the USB into the USB port. Okay, plugged it in. And there we go. It's automatically doing its thing. I'm sure it's gonna bounce back here in a second. Preparing to update, do not turn off the device, do not pull out the UDIS, do not blah, blah, blah. I'm gonna let this do its thing. All right, guys, that is one cool feature is the fact that you can put your own startup screen there. So I've gone ahead, I've done the updating, and I just wanted to share with you guys the biggest, well, not the biggest, the biggest downfall is the fact that I can't get proper Android Auto to work. The other issue is going into the factory screen here, and you can really see now that it's later, and darker without reflections that my screen isn't centered and it needs to come over here. Now, if you touch on the screen and you hold it, well, that's something else. I don't even know what I did there. Manual. Oh, interesting. Okay, I don't know what I just did there, but I have split screen. Okay, now things sort of make a little bit more sense. Right? Um, so we have destination. Okay, I don't know what's going on here. Okay, 800. So this is like manual select stuff here. Now we're in the 1280. So if we go over here, okay, this is actually working. Okay. Okay, let's, okay, how do I get rid of the split screen now? Oh.
Okay, this is what I want. I don't want split screen. Whoa, I fixed it. Holy shit. Okay, I don't know what the hell I did. Went into manual select and I am going to lock that in. I fixed it. So I just finished my commute back from the shop and it's been probably about four days now since I figured out the placement of the original CCC screen um, on the aftermarket unit here. And I've also figured out how to get Android Auto to work. So this so you guys can see here in the daytime, there's probably gonna be some reflections, but you can see, oh, well, there's the old restraint system and my EDC, All right? So here is all of the original BMW stuff positioned correctly, looking good. And I can flip back to all of this, as you see here, and all of your iDrive menu buttons, little joystick, whatever, all of this stuff actually works. Now, the one thing that I was messing up when it came to Android Auto is the Z-Link app. Um, it was constantly on this screen, which is, um, wireless or wired mirroring and mirroring is a pain because all it's doing is showing you exactly what's on your phone. It doesn't activate Android auto. So to activate Android auto, all you have to do is hit this button and boom, it's literally that easy. So there's CarPlay, right? And we can, uh... there we go, right? Look bitch, put me in a film. Got my uh, copyright music there. So you can see Android Auto is now working. I need to change, put my location on here. So I'm going to go ahead and activate location on my phone. And boom, there we go. Google Maps is now engaged. And we can see here, right? So if we go into my Spotify. So everything is working and doing everything that it should. You can actually hit the voice command button on your steering wheel and go through your menu and, you know, do as Android Auto does. So there you guys have it. Long winded. Um, <laughs> it was a little bit of a process. So here's my concluding thoughts. For over $500, and I think that there's some variations of these that are cheaper, like the place from Australia that I tried to get one, but they didn't have them in stock and i think there's a couple other buyers or sorry i think there's a couple other sellers on amazon that you guys could research but i think it's at the end of the day all the same stuff um the support the guy did help me right all the whatsapp support and although it took some time took probably a good week going back and forth to um get everything sorted out i had to do manual updates which you know anything that's android powered usually requires updating a little bit more frequently than uh, one would want or expect but it sort of is what it is so i'm extremely happy that i've got modern looking technology it's fixed the you know look and feel because even the original uh, bmw ccc system right so if we go into that like even this the resolution and everything else is a lot more crisp looking and it just looks nice, right? And you can go through and use your radio and do everything as you would normally. And that's all really nice because, you know, if you're trying to configure your M mode or anything else, you want to be able to have access to the original screen. So that's it, guys. I'm hoping that this will possibly help somebody else out who's on the fence um, and looking at possibly buying this unit. Um, you know, otherwise you could just do the aux cable 
right? And do the old school stuff. So it's sort of like $50 versus $500. Choice is yours. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. We'll see you back here next time on the Infamous Project.